Hey there, today we're taking a look at a system that I've been very excited to cover and that is the B-Link Sur 6 Max. This is a refreshed version of what was already the existing Sur 6 before known as the Sur 6 Pro, now with a new body. Moving to a design that is similar to what they have done with the GTR 6 and GTR 7 as well as the already existing Sur 7. Now what's interesting about this Max version here here is that it is rocking the Ryzen 7 7735HS, which is actually just a refreshed version of the Ryzen 7 6800H, just with some slight clock speed increases. For the most part, it is identical because it's pretty much the same architecture and the same node. There is practically no real difference between the two, or at least not a meaningful one. I will point out though that there is a version of the Sur 6 Max with the Ryzen 9 6900HX. Now, even though that is a 6000 series and not a 7000 series like this, again, this is just a refresh. So on paper, the other system does seem to be faster in terms of both the CPU and the GPU. But of course, the system is a little bit more expensive. I opted for this one because it was the best price to performance that I could find. But that extra TDP might actually allow for those extra clock speeds to maybe make a difference. I personally didn't think that it would really make that much of a difference to be worth the almost $100 difference. That could be different for you. But of course, since the chip in here is a refresh, it isn't the most recent Zen 4 based APUs. Because of that, we are on RDNA 2, but it should still be a massive uplift over any of the Vega based systems that are pretty much below this price tier. This is about as cheap as it gets right now to get into RDNA 2 when it comes to the iGPUs. And of course, if you want RDNA 3, you're pretty much stuck having to go all the way up to the Sur 7 to get in on the low end of that because the Sur 7 really is an extremely cut down system and we're already at price points where it might be better off for you to build your own computer. But let's take a look at what this little system can actually do. Now, of course, one of the games that I very frequently love to test is Rainbow Six Siege. It's a very nice way to give these systems an early ego boost. It's definitely doing that here. Where you can see here, we're getting some spectacular FPS averages, and even more importantly, those 1% lows are looking incredible. This means that if we actually paired this with that 240 hertz display that I have, this would be a perfect gaming experience. And of course, more importantly, it does mean that we could actually start to turn FSR up to higher quality settings we don't really need to settle for the performance preset now the next game that i took a look at was counter strike 2 of course here we have it running with all of the lowest in-game graphics settings and we are using fsr but fsr is being used at the ultra quality preset pretty much just to get a free fps boost if there is any to be had and this is just remarkable levels of performance i am blown away by just how good this performed the one percent lows are incredible the fps average is incredible Again, another one of those games where if we had a high refresh rate display, we could take full advantage of that. And here we didn't even, even really have to sacrifice anything visually in terms of the resolution, since FSR at the ultra quality preset pretty much looks perfectly fine. So all in all, pretty fantastic performance. All right, and the last easy win that we are going to be giving to the system is BattleBit Remastered here running at the Potato Graphics quality the reason that i run it at potato is really just because i'm trying to maximize every fps specifically again in those one percent lows at this level the fps average doesn't really matter as much as uplifting those one percent lows so everything feels buttery smooth and this is pretty much perfection again i'm just so blown away by the level of performance that we can get out of integrated graphics here but of course the game this light is going to perform really really well on a lot of systems and if you had an actual dedicated gaming pc you're looking at more like getting multiple hundreds of fps but again there is no graphics card in this thing this thing is absolutely tiny and we're getting some insane levels of performance now we move on to something that is noticeably harder than the other games and that is red dead redemption 2 now we're running with the lowest in-game graphic settings we do have set the textures to ultra 
but we have FSR at performance. And FSR seems to be the best friend of the 680M because it is what allows it to get such incredible levels of FPS in some of these titles. We are so close to a 60 FPS average, but really the thing that matters the most to me is those frame times and those 1% lows. This is a really smooth, really consistent experience. It's not going to be perfect. It's not far off off from it especially on a system without a graphics card that is this small i am just really really happy to see how well this performed now moving on to a newer title here we have assassin's creed mirage running with the lowest end game graphics settings but we are also using fsr at the performance preset now this was a title that already impressed me on the sur 5 max because of the fact that the Vega iGPU was actually able to give a above 30 FPS average with 1% lows that only dip slightly under that. This is a night and day difference here where this at the exact same graphic settings is pretty much giving you double the performance both in 1% lows and FPS average. And in general actually feels like a significant generational jump in terms of graphical performance. It's pretty much the difference between playing on, on a PlayStation 3 and jumping up to a PlayStation 4, or even a PlayStation 4 in the later years up to a PlayStation 5, since PS4 by the end of its lifetime really had very few 60 FPS games. Now I also took a look at Forza Motorsports, but of course because of the game's insistence on setting everything itself automatically, I pretty much left it at that and only told it to use FSR and I also unlocked the frame rate. And like this, the game didn't exactly have remarkable levels of performance, but it still impressed me just considering how heavy this game has been to run on any GPU that I tested. So those were pretty much the first games that I've tested on this system and I am extremely excited to take a look at this thing it really does seem to have some incredible levels of performance i'm really really excited to dive into this we are of course going to be checking this out on 25 different games and then we're going to be comparing it against the sir 5 max so stay tuned for that i will catch you guys in the next one